My lovely imps, I want to talk about something a little bit weird. And maybe this is better framed as a general criticism of the streaming world. And when I say the streaming world, I don't mean like Netflix and all that kind of stuff. I mean like the type of streaming I'm doing. Um, or if you're watching this as a video, the type of stream that I was doing. Go check out my live streams over on the live tab. But for real, um, the streaming world has a bit of a problem. And this might come off as a little bit cruel. But I think that the streaming world right now is artistically bankrupt. I'm not saying that there's nobody doing anything artistic, but the world as a whole is impoverished on an artistic level. And um, some of this is even criticism that I would point at myself. I try to make my show very unique. I try to make my show artistically unique. You know, whether it's my frame, whether it's my set, whether it's the fact that I constantly am changing things up in my set and changing things about my design. You know, I put a lot of thought into the outfits that I wear on stream. You know, I got all my little horns and my things that I dress up with to add a lot of artistic flair to what you see when you come and watch my show. And of course, there's the harder to quantify type stuff, like how I choose to present things, the type of jokes that I tell, stuff like that. I try to put a lot of effort into that, but even I, have fallen victim in a certain way to a lack of artistic ambition that I think per pervades the entire streaming space. And it's unfortunate. I think it's really, really bad and depressing, actually, um, that in the current world of streaming, content is the ultimate central thing. It is more important than anything else. It's just, you just need to put anything out and it doesn't matter what it is, just churn, churn, churn. Content, 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 content in every direction. You gotta be streaming a ton, you gotta be streaming all the time, you gotta be putting it out, you gotta be whatever. Anything that you can do to get the content out. Um, and there's a whole bunch of reasons why I think that's the case. I don't wanna spend too much time going into the reasons why, you know, the content is the central focus, but it is the focus. And it has a, it has downstream effects, which is that um, as a industry, the streaming industry uh, has a tendency to value um, extremely shallow subjects, extremely shallow content, because Content is all that matters. Just filling up space and time, having something on the screen as much as possible. Because that's the thing. There is a tendency towards streaming to, to, to basically always fall into the lowest common denominator, um, you know, uh, presentations that you can come up with. Um, everything from just endless drama baiting to the most questionably ethical React content you could possibly imagine. You know, there's the sort of famous conflict with React streamers who will literally leave their empty chair, you know? Like if I was to get up right now and just be like, all right guys, uh, here's, um, here's uh, you know, Star Wars, the original trilogy. See you guys in a minute. And then, you know, Star Wars started playing. Um, and then I just was like, yeah, I've been really grinding, hustling and grinding this month, you know? I've been like, you know, I've been really on my grind. And my grind means like leaving my empty chair with people watching like something that somebody else made. I don't think that, by the way, I should be clear, I don't think that React in and of itself is a bad thing. There's lots of really great React content out there where people add a lot. I do React content and I have a policy of always making sure that when I'm doing React content that I'm adding a lot of my own touch because that's just how I like to do things. But this, this like content is supreme, like the amorphous content pursuit um, is I think really bad for the streaming world. And I think that it results in um, people who enjoy streaming being given a worse experience. People who 
uh, people being incentivized to make something worse than what they could make. I'm not saying that every single stream in the world needs to knock it out the park and be in like an A plus, you know, avant garde art production, but there's a remarkable uh, uh, shallowness even to the variety in presentation among streamers. If you go and flick through streamers on popular streaming flat platforms, you get a lot of streams that look functionally identical. It's actually sometimes impossible to tell the difference between one stream and another if you don't know the streamer you're like from spending time there, you might not even know what the difference between two streams is. And yet there are two different people making their own supposedly unique product. And I think that that is really unfortunate. Another thing that I think that is a downstream effect of, uh, 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 sorry, a downstream effect of worshiping content as the ultimate, just, just getting out whatever you can as the ultimate form of streaming is that uh, streaming has no, uh, has no culture of mutual uplifting. I've worked in a lot of different artistic industries. I went to film school. I've worked in the film industry. I worked as a writer for a really long time. And I've also worked a lot of different, like sort of traditional employment jobs. Okay. And I swear to God, um, even in the world of sales, okay even in when i was working in sales okay the most like what you imagine would be the most like soulless uh enterprise you can possibly imagine um there was a culture of people being able to uplift one another and be inspired by one another even in the cutthroat world of sales let me give you an example of this if you were to go to your favorite streamer in fact, I'll just make make you, let you think about it. Think of your favorite streamer if it's not me. If it's me, you might already know the answer. Have you ever heard them talk about another streamer that inspires them? I just did it. So I kind of got a gotcha. Obviously, if you're watching this as a video on YouTube, like and subscribe. But, you know, yeah, you've heard them. I was going to say, I, I watch... A lot of different streamers and I basically never hear that I hear streamers talk about um, you know sometimes movies that inspire them sometimes other types of artists that inspire them but I rarely ever hear streamers um, talk about other streamers that inspire them people whose work they're like wow this is interesting in in the world of film filmmakers almost will devote themselves to schools of filmmaking that they wish to learn how to master. They'll have favorites that they go, this is the type of stuff that I want to do or that I want to incorporate and adapt for myself. And you just don't really see that in streaming. And I think part of that is just because streaming hasn't developed very well as an artistic medium yet. And I would like to see that change. Maybe it's not possible. Maybe the way that the industry is set up, the fact that, you know, these things that contribute to the content brain, the fact that like pay is not very good, that there's extremely high expectations placed on streamers as far as, uh, you know, how much time they're supposed to be spending working on content versus doing other things like, you know, getting inspiration and whatever. Um, maybe that's just too out of whack and wherever we're at right now, it's just not possible. But I would like to see people really pushing the envelope and starting to develop, um, artistic identities within streaming that make people excited, that make people strive, that make people ambitious. You know, I would love to see that type of thing. Um, there is a you know, st stereotype about streaming that it's like a, the, the biggest popularity contest that, you know, streaming is basically just about perfecting the lowest common denominator to get the maximum number of views possible. And unfortunately, I think there's a certain amount of truth to that a lot of times that there is a huge pressure for streamers to basically hollow out their unique identity in the name of maximizing views, because that is the way that you make a living not even just how you get rich. That is just how you have to make a living a lot of times. I hope we can change that. 
Um, I would like to see streamers start to figure out how to make their broadcast unique, how to start building an artistic DNA for the streaming world. Obviously, streaming is a fairly new industry. I recognize we're still in the baby steps phase of a new artistic medium being born. Um, and we obviously have spiritual success or spiritual predecessors, radio, um, you know, other types of live performance, uh, live TV, for example. Um, although the world of live TV has its own, you know, uh, limitations, you know, a lot of live TV was like news stuff, but radio was a place where, um, where there was tons of essentially live performance and people could call in in real time and engage with the show in real time. That's the closest comparison I always have to streaming. And if you look at the world of radio, oh my God, there is so much, there is so much unique identity within the world of radio. If you go and you look at the most famous radio performers, you, you look at two different radio performers, you go, these guys run a totally different show. It's a completely different experience between one show to the other, just because there is so much variance in the ways that people chose to engage with radio in an artistic way. And I would love to see that for streaming. I want to see streamers engage with this more. I want to see streamers be inspired by other streamers, be uh, interested in understanding streaming as an art form, not just as a content factory. And it's, a, it, it's interesting to me that I rarely ever hear streamers talking about streaming as an artistic enterprise. It's almost always talked about like a business or like a content factory. You know, I need to set up this, this, and this so that everything chugs out and gets posted at the right time. There's there's very little engagement with like talking about streaming as an art. How do we play with interactability? Um, you know, just before this, if you're watching live, you obviously just heard this. If you didn't, go check it out on my actual live stream. Um, I was talking about Jerma's Dollhouse, which is one of the most inspiring um, pieces of stream art. And I really do think it's stream art. Um, it's incredibly funny. It's unbelievably creative. It's doing a ton of different things that nobody had ever done before. Uh, or at least certainly not on that scale and all at once. And it makes for an incredibly inspiring show. It makes you go, wow, what could we, what could, what other cool things could we do taking this format and going further or taking or, or building off ideas that were used here. Um, I love seeing stuff like that. I, I, I really love seeing things like Jerma's Dollhouse where it's like a, a performance art stream experience and it is a piece of art and I love that. Um, I, 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 I want to see more of it is what I'm trying to say. And uh, I'm happy to hear that a couple of people in my audience do have favorite streamers who talk about who they're inspired by. Um, I personally, I watch a lot of streams and I don't hear it almost ever. What I tend to hear is people talking about streaming like a factory, like they're setting up a, a, a assembly line in Factorio. And I think that that is, uh, it's sad to a certain degree. Maybe, maybe it's inevitable, but I would like to think, and I'm going to certainly be continuing to put my mind to how we can make streaming more of an art form and less of a factory. Anyway, if that's interesting to you, first of all, go check out my live streams. They're amazing. And secondly, make sure that you hit subscribe below because I'm constantly doing new stuff on my show and I bet you're going to love it. Thank you. Thank you.